Semra Frosh is found dead at the bottom of her pool at the age of 38. Adam claims that he and Samra were back together again at the time of her death, a claim the prosecutor isn't buying. This video contains the interview of a friend of Dr. Adam Frash, who was found guilty of drowning his wife in their pool. Women, expensive cars, and fancy sunglasses. None of these sound like typical interests for an average podiatrist, but for Adam Frash, luxury was the only way to live. Frash married his third wife, Samira, in 2009 without telling her that not only had he been married when the two of them met, but he had also fathered a child with another woman. This set the tone for the marriage, which was full of volatile ups and downs. In late 2013, evidence of a new affair came to Samira's attention, and this seemed to be the final straw. She filed for a divorce, and the two separated. Samira told friends and family that she feared for her life. On February 2nd, 2014, the maintenance man noticed Samira's dog, Bella, was near the pool, where she didn't belong. He decided to go check, and that is when he discovered the body of Samira Frash submerged in the shallow end of the pool. how he met Adam Frash and some of the jobs he performed for him. How it seems like an odd choice for a wealthy doctor to choose as a babysitter, especially given the fact that the two men 
didn't know each other all that well. Um, 
around the house again? Well, Thomasville, no, the Thomasville house. Oh, Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, you know, cleaning up the yard, mm -hmm. helping them out at the office, moving cars around, and you know, she's always telling them, you gotta move this car, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. So, so he would tell you to go uh, ask you to do it? He would ask me to drop off, like, her, her Hummer. He had, I guess, taken it to a state. It was the only vehicle that wasn't blocked in their driveway. Mm -hmm. And it was, what, Super Bowl weekend. He asked me to pick, he dropped the Hummer off at a gas station, had me meet him at the gas station, and I took the Hummer back to her because he didn't want her to see him and, mm -hmm. you know, I guess be he didn't want to stir up anything there. So I dropped the Hummer off and got someone to pick me up. The way Frash wanted Halleck to deal with the Hummer doesn't make a lot of sense unless he is trying to establish some sort of history of being afraid of his wife. Of all the people he could have chosen, why pick someone he hadn't seen in a year? Without her even, you know, being around I just dropped right. it and left. All right, so tell me about, you said a week ago there was a little incident. What happened? Yeah, there? it was, um, it was not, no, it wasn't last week. It was the week before that. Mm -hmm. Um, you remember what day it was on or anything like that? Um, I can, you mind if I, I can tell you exactly. Because I text my mom to pick me up in the middle of Thomasville Road because I, I was not, in that house. It was uh, the seventh of February. February seventh. Yeah. Okay. So tell me what happened February seventh. Um he had a rental card that um we had to transport transport back to Miami. Um and I had the rental car. He went to the house to. What kind of rental car was it? Uh, Chevy Cruze Blue. Okay. Um. That I that he had to transport back, transport back to Miami. Um. He went to the house because he's thinking that him and Sarah were gonna go to Miami because they've been off and on. Um, like the week before they had gone to Miami and things had worked out, and and the week before that they were in Vegas and um. He wanted, I, I had been with him the night before and we slept at his office in, in Thomasville. Mm -hmm. Well, I took the rental car um, to my house to shower and, and get a pair of clothes and then I was going to take it back to him and, you know, either go with them or <coughs> get picked up and, and leave. Mm -hmm. and probably an hour, in like an hour after I left, he called me and said, you know, Sarah's hitting me, she's going crazy, she's going ballistic, he's like, come get me. And I live, what, about 45 right. minutes away. Anyway. So I rush out of the house and I get there and no, like he's gone. And <coughs> I walk up to the door, knock on the door, and uh, Hira comes, she doesn't recognize me, and Sarah comes up and uh, she, she's like, what do you want? I was like, Doc, call me, is everything all right? She's like, yeah, it's fine, call him. I was like, are you all right? She's like, oh, I'm good, I'm good. It, everything's real good with me. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, conditioning, like, mm -hmm. like, uh, like, well, I'm not sure how to describe the attitude. Mm -hmm. But she's like, call him. And closed the door and I left. <coughs> or I guess she had his phone at the house and, and he called me from a separate number of the 313 number, whatever he's got. You have that number? Do I have it? Yeah. Third three two one eight 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 nine seven six nine. This is another cell phone he's got. So it's one that he had um as a backup, just you know, month right. to month. Yeah. Just in case something like this happened. All right. So he calls you and what? And he's at the Thomasville at the office. That was kind of like his home base since he wasn't staying in Gold Eagle and his house in Thomasville is very livable. Um, he has the Hummer, <coughs> the white one, mm -hmm. um, and he got in a Jeep uh, that was on a U-Haul trailer. Mm -hmm. So he's like, "Oh, we need to take the U-Haul trailer back." 
and uh, drop the Jeep off, take the trailer back, come back to the office. I'm in the bathroom, and he's doing something. She's going to try to fix the dents in the rental car. Um, and he's like, we got to go. I'm like, what? He's like, she's got the, someone's got the Hummer. I don't think he said she, he said someone. Because he left it on in the thing. Well, then he, then he see her pull around, and it's her driving. Mm -hmm. And he's like, she's got my bags, my checks, everything, my other, but the, his other phone. And she had my jacket, my keys, my money, all that stuff. So he follows her to, to outside of Thomasville. Well, he comes up on her. And uh, he was speeding up on her because he, he, I was trying to call her, so I wasn't answering. Mm -hmm. um, so he speeds up on her and he's saying, roll down your window. And she just swings over, you know. And I was in the passenger seat and that thing is about this far away from my head. I was like, oh my God, we're about to get hit. Mm -hmm. She jerks back and loses control and spins to the highway. She does? She does, yeah. yeah. And there's probably... 10 cars behind us. I'm like, oh my God, what, you know. So he pulls around and he's like, I gotta get my bags, I gotta get her to stop. She pulls off in the ditch and, and spins around and comes, you know, trying to ram him from the front. And he backs up and it's like, uh, demolition derby. I'm like, what the f are you doing, dude? Like, relax, just stay back. And he's like, I gotta get my stuff. And she pulls over and he pulls over and she puts it in reverse. Like she, she wanted to hit him from the back. Well, uh, she stopped and he got in front of her and I got out and I said, Nah. She did. Uh, I'm like, Where were we all at? Uh, I, I can give you a picture of it because I text my mom a picture of the. Uh, were we all in Leon County or were we all in. I don't know. No. Um, Halleck has a picture of the evidence, which is proof that something happened, but not necessarily what that was. That was, uh, right there. Mm -hmm. That's where I got dropped off. Uh, yeah. yeah, so, I was like, I'm, I'm not doing none of this. Uh, because I figured either he's going to wreck or she's going to hit him or he's going to hit her. And she, I'm like, I'm not having anything to do with it. Yeah. So mom picks me up and I'm thinking we're going to see the truck on the side getting towed in the car and them arrested. Nah. I was like, how the hell do they have a, a demolition derby on the, in the middle of a major road yeah. with at least 15 witnesses and nobody's called the police and there's no how to talk. Did they actually ever hit each other or they're just... They not on no. She stuff. hit him in the in the um at Golden Eagle. There's probably footage, or he said there's. No, I'm talking about in the cars hit. during all this. Nah, time. Like I never nobody got ever got hit, but it was really close. All right. Um. So they they go on and you guys ride with your mom. Yeah, it took her about an hour. Well, I was like, my motorcycle's at his office in, in Thomasville. My keys were in my jacket pocket. You know, all my money, my ID, everything. So I was like, I don't care. I'm going up there. I'm getting your stuff because she's like, I would press myself if the, she's trying to keep your shit. Yeah. You know, because that's why she's like, hold on to stuff. Um. So we go to their house in Golden Eagle, and surprisingly, they met it there. And I was like, you know, surprised. Well, he's sitting in the car, and she's in the Hummer on the road. My mom asked her. She's like, Josh needs your stuff. She's like, if you don't give it back, we're calling the police. Like, he had nothing to do with this. And then she starts threatening me, saying she's going to take me to court because um, I tried to kill her, which I was in the passenger seat. You know, like I had nothing to do with it. I get my stuff, and, I'm, and she's going off, and we just leave. And uh, I talked to him later that night, and he said they, they drove around Golden Eagle for like two and a half hours, and he finally got his stuff, and, and he left, and he was... And this was all back on the 7th. February. Yeah, that evening. Mm -hmm. um, I was Have you talked? Did you ever talk to him since then? Yeah, a few times. Yeah. You know, he um, what's the date today? I'm, I talked to him quite a few times because. Twenty fourth. Yeah, <coughs> yeah, I talked to him quite a bit. Was on the phone or did you met up with him or other since then? I'm trying to think because. <coughs> I mean, uh, I'm 
I'm been doing construction and did I read up on them? Um I guess I can't remember, I'd have to look at my phone and see what, what I text. Um Have you been back to the house? Since then no. Yeah, no. Well, if now, she said that she didn't want me around and that she had a restraining order against me, which I never really did anything about that, you know. Did, uh, since that time, did, when you when you guys talked, did you tell you about any other altercations that they had since then? Or? Um, I'm t there's, I don't think so, I'm, it's, I have to sit and things kind of, Right. I keep, I know that that one was imprinted because it was pretty bad. Um, right. He actually came to my house uh, probably the next weekend or next, yeah, and he brought that um, the cruise mm -hmm. over, and we were trying to fix because she ended up backing into it, and he's like, oh, we got to try and fix that. So we tried fixing it, and um, that didn't work out too well, and that's when him and her went to Miami, because um, he had run it through the mud, trying to, you know, maybe they won't see it. Mm -hmm. And he was like, she got upset because, because uh, we had to ride in a um, dirty car, you know, because she's like, I'm not riding in a dirty car. And, um, but I saw him that day, and what did we do after? How did that day end? I rode with him. We went to AutoZone, she had a paint puller. Mm -hmm. um, we went up to Tallahassee Auto Clinic to talk about one of his vehicles. And we got another one of his vehicles from there and I drove it back to Thomasville. Um, okay. so then we took the white Mercedes, I don't know if it's in the driveway or not, um, from Thomasville to Tallahassee. And I had my mom meet me at um, at the Circle K there, mm -hmm. and she picked me up and I dropped his vehicle off and I left. And oh, you dropped his vehicle off at the Circle K? No, no, no. I followed him. I followed him in the rental car to his house. Yeah, I had him back. Crash seems to be making use of Halleck quite a bit at this point. It is possible that Halleck is one of the people that has received money from Frash as a result of the Medicaid scam and is therefore willing to lie for him. There again. But I never went. I just dropped the rental car in the driveway and I got them all and left. Because um, they cooled down again. You know, they're they, they about to go back to Miami and everything's fine. And okay. um, that's the way it was right now. This uh, hour of heated argument and 20 minutes later, everything's fine, you know. Yeah. Let's go to the casino and get more, let's go out to eat at Ruth Chris or, yeah. you know. Um, um, that's when, I guess, they went to Miami that evening. So, uh, I'll look through my text to so tell you the exact dates. Um, When's the last time you've spoken with him? I spoke to him uh, Saturday. Yeah. Okay, what time was Saturday? At 10... 15, he called me? To 15 at night? In the morning. In the morning? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what did they say? Alright. Did he say where he called you from? Or anything? He didn't say where he called me from. He said, I asked him how everything went with, you know, how he's doing, what all happened. Um, he said it was a 45 minute conversation, so there's a lot in yeah. there, and he, I mean, Way he talks back and forth and really, you know, right. I guess kind of like me. No. Um, he said they made it to Miami, returned a rental car. He ended up having insurance on the rental car. He said that um, they were fight that they, they had fought, you know, because the car was dirty. But they were fine, and then asked him, "Oh, what are you doing today?" Because I was going to work. Mm -hmm. um, we had worked really late in Crawfordville. I didn't get home until like 2.15. And I was driving my boss's van to go pick up my boss. He was at church on, uh, I think it's Blount Street. Okay. I had to pick him up at 11. That's when he called me at 10.15. He said, uh, went to Miami, argued, 
yada yada. Um, I had tried calling him a few, t uh, quite a few times, and uh, he's like, oh yeah, she, I couldn't, I just turn my phone off because she gets upset whenever, like, she's my number calling. She's like, why is he calling you? He's, he's a liar and, and uh, you know, just quite a few disparaging things about me. Um, he said that that she had been drinking the past few days, like really heavy, because she had just gotten, um, this woman sold her a video mm -hmm. of him and her having sex. You know, they're going through a divorce, he figured, you know, go out there and see all of his other options. Mm -hmm. But the woman had sold Sam a video of them having sex for like four grand. Um, and he said that when she saw the video, that she, he was, he was like, you know, he could say that, yeah, I've been with this woman, and she'll get mad and angry and throw things. He said, but when she saw the video and actually watched it, he said, she looked really, really hurt. Mm -hmm. He's like, I could tell that this really hurt her. He's like, I'd be the same way. If I saw a video of her having sex with someone else, he's like, it would tear me apart. Mm -hmm. And um, said she'd been drinking for the past few days. Um, and then, so I was like, oh, so are you, are you all in Miami still, or because, you know, nor there? He said, and this officer Shane kind of, I guess, was pressing me. I don't know if he said he was in Panama City, mm -hmm. or if he was on his way to Panama City. I know that he did say that he was going to Panama City, or like that was his eventual, you know, destination. Mm -hmm. I said, what are you guys, you know, what are y'all doing tonight? He said, well, Sarah wants to... I said, Sam Remain, he said she gave him the children and she wanted the day, you know, the day for herself just to, I guess, have some alone time or whatever. Because she's had the children uh, to herself this whole time. And he said she had given him the children and he was going to Panama City and she was going to either drive there and meet him and they were going to fly to Miami or, or they were just going to, like, I guess, fly separately and meet in Miami. Um, talked about the cost of driving versus flying and it'd be just as easy to, or just as as much to fly as to drive and mm -hmm. um and that's about eleven oh two or three I, I had to go pick up my boss I was getting gas and yeah that's about um when I had to cut him off. That was pretty much the extent of the conversation when I had to cut him off I was like oh um, Pulling up to the job, I gotta call you back. Right. Did you talk to her the day before that? The day before that? Yeah. No, no, I didn't talk to her the day before that. Okay. Um, is that the last time you talked to him? Yeah, and then I, I worked and I wasn't able to call him back, and then Kimmel called me around. It's five o'clock Saturday. Mm -hmm. and said so Sarah was dead. It's like, my dude, what? What? Did you, what? I thought he was being either. Melodramatic, or like, or just I don't know, hopeful. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Um, but then that's mm -hmm. uh, then I started trying to call him quite a few times. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know. I was like, what the hell? Maybe. Did you ever talk to him after you heard about that? Nah, I haven't talked to him since. I talked to his dad a few times. So that was the la last time you talked to him was on uh, about ten, fifteen. From um, ten fifteen to eleven oh. About eleven oh five. Saturday. Saturday, yeah. Okay. Um, let's go back a little bit. The time that you were at the house, uh let's talk about Sam Rose. Um you know, how was she around the pool? Did she did you ever see her get in the pool? Did you ever see her? She couldn't swim. No, she can't swim. Um I mean, did you ever see her get in? I mean No. She she was just would you say she was scared to death of it? And no, she'd been around it. She'd come out there and um, she'd be near it. Yeah. You know, she wasn't definitely afraid or anything. Right. She just said she'd never learned how to swim. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, you can see videos of her where she's laying in water, okay. you know, on the beach or whatever, but I don't know if she didn't know how to swim or if it was just something she wasn't interested in. And, and it's like she said, she doesn't know how to ride a bike, but she knows how to ride a bike, but it just, she said it hurts her. I don't do that, you know. Yeah. That's how she said I don't swim. I, 
either she doesn't know how to swim or she just doesn't swim. I was like, right. it, it, but she's been around the pool. Yeah. I mean, it's not like so. Just from your experience, and I know I'm saying I'm not saying that you know one way or the other, but uh, like the example you just brought up, that she says she doesn't know how to, she knows how to ride a bike, but she says she doesn't just because she don't want to do it. Yeah, like so. This could she be got a thick action. She got a language barrier. Yeah. I've never seen her swim, but. From what I always, you know, just in the back of my mind, you know, a sense of something is like, oh, Sarah doesn't know how to swim. This is what I would think. Yeah. Um, uh, but she's not afraid of water, you know. I've seen her. Alex says that Samira wasn't afraid of being around the pool, but he cannot reliably confirm whether or not she knew how to swim. I've seen her in water, like, I kind of think that she went in the, no, she never went in the pool. She's like chased the cat around the pool, like, like, in a, you know, running around the pool, like kind of unsafe, you know, if you slip, you might fall in, and, but of course she would think that someone would help her out, you know. Um, um. when you say you witnessed, uh, I want to make it clear, I witnessed her be violent multiple times. Right. She's got, I mean, it seems like everybody's like, oh, he's a bad man. This woman, and I've told him in court, I told the CPS people, yeah. I told them, this woman needs help. She's majorly bipolar. I'm saying she, that she's violent. Halleck cast doubts on the mental stability of the victim, which may have been Frash's intent all along. I wanted to remind you once again, my new merch shop is up. StrangerLabel.com is full of relatable designs like the Unstable and the Mentally Checked Out t-shirts, as well as other cool items like the All-Seeing Beanie and the Stranger Socks. Every purchase helps support this channel, and you can even write me a short message on the purchase page. I'll be reading every single message that comes with any order, big or small. So head to StrangerLabel.com and get whatever you want. And with that said, let's get back into the case. Violent, have you seen him be violent? Never. That's the thing. Like, he, we've been in his litter room. He's holding Hira. You know, it's about a year ago. Or before, uh, what is it? The, this is probably in February, March of 2012. He's had Hira, and she slapped the shit out. I mean, scratch marks on the face. And he's protecting the baby. I'm like, dude, can you? You know, we've been driving on, um, I don't know what the word is, from, like, Homestead to Miami, that, or mm -hmm. that, what, freeway, you know, six-lane freeway, traffic, 50 miles an hour. She's hit him in the back of the head with a stiletto shoe, like, you know, multiple times. Mm -hmm. And babies are, babies behind me, I'm in the passenger seat, I'm like, what the hell are you doing? What are you doing? You can't hit someone when they're driving like that. You're gonna kill us. Yeah. I mean, multiple outbursts of violence, and nobody ever took me seriously or him. You know, it, it's like she just brought him for a domestic violence charge. The charges get dropped. She beat the shit out of him multiple times at that scene. Mm -hmm. She was. She would drive very erratically, like chasing him down with her Hummer, with the babies in the car, and it was like hitting his his uh, red red truck. There's video showing her chasing him out of their complex and nobody does anything about it. Like it's, she's, I guess she puts on such a sweet demeanor yeah. to everybody else, but this woman would turn into a banshee at the drop of a hat. It was, that's all I can say. Well, um, I had just a quick side question I was just curious about. Why did he rent cars? He got like a 60 something cars. Why does he, None of his cars are tagged or insured, and he's a hoarder. Like, he hoards the vehicles. The car was, his dad had actually rented it for a time that he came down here, and uh, he just hadn't returned it. He's he got so much going on, I don't, he just rents cars, and... What, did you say, did you talked to his dad here recently? Yeah, I talked to him probably four hours ago. So they'd be here tomorrow morning at noon. Have they talked to him? No, he tried to call uh, uh, Bay County. They yeah. said they had him in the medical ward, and he couldn't talk to him until tomorrow morning. Okay. 
or maybe and you hadn't Wednesday. talked to him since he's been here or he hadn't checked on you he probably, he probably doesn't remember my number and okay. I'm sure he's got family you know Daphne or Addison that he called for yeah. and he wished they'd call on me his dad did say that um, he tried to call him at like 3 in the morning and then his mom pushed the wrong number and accidentally dismissed it so he tried to get a hold of his mom uh, what was that, at 3 in the morning? 3 in the morning, that would have been... I talked to his dad last night, he told me about it, so that would have been... So Saturday morning at 3, or Sunday morning Sunday at 3. Sunday morning at 3. What, um, what have you heard that happened? What have I... I've only heard that she was found in the pool at 11 to the news. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard anything about, you know, autopsy reports or police saying anything, you know. Mm -hmm. Whitlock saying that he's not surprised that... I don't see how, I don't know what his angle is. Yeah. It seems like a, a, a leech for, he's trying to make a name for himself or put his name in the paper, you know, off of her dad. What, what did you think happened? I mean, just, I mean, I know you don't know a whole lot, but what do you think? Either, happened? either she said she needed, she saw the video and got upset, really upset, and got tanked and slipped in the pool inadvertently maybe passed out, hit her head, I don't know. I think either she fell accidentally, or she did it intentionally, or that she attacked him to the point where he had no choice and it was an accident and then he probably got, you know, like, oh, going through this course, how's this gonna look? And he just got, you know, upset and, mm -hmm. and scared and ran, you know? Do you know uh, what the latest car he's been driving or what car he yeah. would be in yeah um nah, uh, I mean what does he normally drive I mean I know <laughs> um does he have a particular car that he drives nah he switches the car that he was driving the last that I saw him when they were going was that white Mercedes mm -hmm. with the the white wheels on it I think it's an O2 with the body kit on it um all of his cars got towed out of, out of his yard or driveway. So that one had tags, I think. Or else he would have taken the Jeep from his other house in Tallahassee. What is it? Uh, Lennoxville? Mm -hmm. He would have probably taken the, the black Jeep or that white Mercedes. But he had keys to several of them. And Where do they normally keep the keys? <coughs> he keeps them in his bag. I don't know about... um. He's got a book bag that he keeps, like, 30 keys in. Yeah. Um, he says that she... It comes as no surprise when Halleck speculates that Samira's death was an accident or suicide. At the most, he is willing to believe that Frash killed her in self-defense and then panicked. Still, he does end up giving potentially useful information about Frash's vehicles. He broke into the safe back in, I guess, August and had all the keys, or once she got the house, that she what kept all the keys and he didn't know. What does she do? She normally drives the Hummer? Yeah. What does she do with those keys? Does she keep them in a certain location in um, the house or anything? They had a box, like a, a metal box that was in the safe. Mm -hmm. They had like hooks on it, but it was just all thrown. It was a, um, like an Armani or a Fendi, like box of jewelry would come in, mm -hmm. I think. This has been like a year and a half since I even seen the box. There's a box and they keep just keeps in. Um, from what I know, they were all in the safe, but and he said that she broke in. She says he broke in. Um, so the key that she used for the Hummer that she drives probably every day, she keeps in a safety box. No, she no, has? she keeps that like in her purse, but okay. uh, but they have all the spares other keys. and other keys. Does she know he keeps her Hummer keys in her purse? It's just wherever, or like it. Throws them on the counter or something. Throws them on the floor. Have someone pick up behind, pick them up behind her. You know, okay. it, it is. Oh. Um, like find my keys over in the closet underneath your shoes. In your conversations with him recently, did you uh, did he mention? You know, he said he was taking the kids to give her a day off. He said or that she gave him the children. Well, that's what I meant. Yeah. The, the head. Not you was taking them. No, no, I, I didn't mean to say that. He had the kids to give her a day off, whether he took them, whether she gave them to him, yeah. whatever. Um, has that, do you know if recently he's done that, the same thing in the past, or the well, past she's few weeks or so? Uh, they've been going to, they've been going out of town and she's
he's gone out while he's watching kids as a babysitter. In his so past, say, month or so? Say two, a week ago in Miami, you know, yeah. he said. Or I can tell you about the Vegas one. Vegas, oh, she went out for the night and left me with the children. You know, it's not something like, like he's not allowed to have the kids. They go to, they've been out multiple times for the past month together as a couple. Um, he's got a video on her phone where she goes off at him in, in Las Vegas on his phone. But, you know, like the night before, you know, he's, he's watching the babies, mm -hmm. she's out, or... What about why is it he, while she, they're here in Tallahassee? While they're here in Tallahassee, he's spent the night, you know, like right. stayed over multiple times. Um, and yeah, I'm, I think he said he was taking, oh yeah, he was taking the babies to get, um, to get diapers. And she wanted, she made him go get milk. This is like, I don't know, like a Wednesday before, like last weekend. Like, not last Wednesday, but the Wednesday before that. Okay. She's like, oh, I got the babies, I'm getting milk and getting uh, formula. And so he's taking the kids to, like, the store and stuff? Yeah. It's not like she's not letting them have the kids and, and, yeah. and, uh, I thought they were kind of on the way, on the verge of, um, of reconciling, which isn't a, the right word to use, but them reconcile would be just less heck, less chaotic. Yeah. Um, but, and then this, this woman sold her the, the, first she sold her pictures and then she sold her video, and that's what kind of got everything crazy. But he said that, it, it, he said the pictures, brought them closer together, like, oh, look at these, this is like, this. look at these whores, look what they'll do, you know, you're not going to find a woman like me, uh, this is what you get when you go out and, yeah. and mess around. But then he said the video kind of, they went like all downhill after that, so. Hang tight for me, man. Uh-huh. <coughs> In Halleck's opinion. The video is what sparked the whole event. It doesn't appear to cross his mind that if Frash was planning on divorcing his wife, that video could end up costing him quite a lot in the settlement. And Frash wasn't brought to trial until 2017 when he was found guilty of first degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. His attorneys appealed the conviction in 2019, asserting that the conviction should be thrown out because the court denied a motion for a new trial without a hearing and allowed state prosecutors to introduce what they call hearsay evidence. The court chose to uphold the conviction. Thank you for watching. If you like this type of content and want to support the channel, there is a Patreon link in the description below. You'll be able to watch videos with zero ads and some that are too controversial for YouTube, and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Thanks again for sticking around and I'll see you in the next video.